Southern Mississippi's Golden Eagles take on the Charlotte 49ers and honor the Golden Eagles seniors and get ready to wrap up the regular season with a trip to take on the Marshall Thundering Herd. All that today on Southern Miss Sports Today with Jay Hobson. Well, hi everybody. Welcome to Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Jay Hobson presented by Bank Corp South. Golden Eagles wrapped up the home portion of their 2017 football schedule on Saturday afternoon. A big, big win over the Charlotte 49ers and uh, Hop, that's the way you like to finish the home schedule in front of the, the Golden Eagles seniors playing for the final time yeah. in the Rock and uh, just one of those games where Everything seemed to work on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, was, John. Uh, I thought we, we played a really good football game. I felt like, um, you know, offensively, um, we operated really well. Defensively, I felt like we, we did a great job, but not only um, flying around, chasing the ball, but creating turnovers. I thought it was just an all-around good game. Uh, maybe could have done a few things better on special teams, but uh, again, offensively and defensively, I was really pleased. Talk about the offensive side, over 500 yards for the second consecutive week, and boy, everything seemed to be clicking, particularly again, uh, the running game, and Edo Smith, another big, yeah, big ball game. Yeah, Edo had to give the offensive line, too, a lot of credit. Edo did a great job. I felt like Tez ran good. also felt like T-Rod came in and ran good. So. Uh, you know, Edo certainly that, that long run in the third quarter was a special run. I told him I thought he got a little supercharged there around the 40-yard line. Uh, that guy was on his heels, and he just kind of took it into another little gear right there, but just did a great job, and it was a, just an overall, I thought, a good football game. I know you weren't uh, very pleased with the defensive performance, particularly in the, the second half at Rice. Well, they came back and yeah, really played maybe, a super yeah, game on Saturday. I, th I thought we had great gap integrity. I thought our guys played hard. They played physical, played fast. What about Kelsey Douglas? Yeah. You know, two interceptions for a touchdown. Uh, you know, again, that's still a team touchdown. Great pass rush and created some, um, you know, some indecision in the quarterback's mind. And, and Kelsey just uh, took advantage. How about on the defensive side? You mentioned uh, Kelsey Douglas, but I tell you, if you start naming names, there were so many guys that made big plays defensively. There really were. I mean, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, the guy that gets the pick is the benefactor of a lot of other guys playing good football. But I felt like we, again, I felt like we tackled well. I felt like we played hard. I thought it was a true nasty bunch effort out there Saturday. So, uh, you know, it's just something we got to continue to build on and grow. And I, I felt like this year, you know, those guys have played hard all, all 11 weeks. So uh, we know we got a big challenge this week and we got to prepare hard. We're going to uh, head into our feature segment here in a minute. And, uh, and a little bit later, we'll look at the Golden Eagle seniors and also visit with uh, Coach Tim Billings. But we also have a feature today on Alan Fails. There's another guy. Yeah. It's a great story, yeah, a guy yeah. who's battled back from a lot and has, has really made some big contributions. Yeah, we have some great stories on this football team. But Alan's a young man that's had a lot of adversity in his life. And, and he's a guy that uh, just kept battling and kept plugging and earned a scholarship. We put him on scholarship this past summer and uh, just does a tremendous job for us on, on our defensive side and on our special teams and a, a young man that I'm extremely proud of you know Allen's a guy that uh, again is one of those all-around great guys not only a, an outstanding football player but just a better person great student works hard in the classroom does all the little things right and uh, you know he, he's a true uh, you know true story you know just a, just a just to see and, and to hear about all the things he's had to battle to get to where he's gotten to. And he's a young man that's going to finish up with a college degree. So a true miracle and a true blessing to our football team. We're glad Allen's part of the Golden Eagles. And he's just, uh, that's what college football is all about, guys like that. It really is. It's, he's a special story. All right, the Golden Eagles uh, with that victory over Charlotte in our feature segment today. Got a lot of interesting things I think you're going to enjoy, including we'll talk about the Golden Eagles seniors. So let's sit back now and uh, our features this week take you inside Golden Eagle football. I'm in the Southern Miss, uh, how I got here. Uh, it, re it really, I felt like God led me here. You know, uh, I had a lot of opportunities to go play other places and uh, my family was going through a little, uh, a little something. And so, you know, I wanted to continue to play football but stay closer to them. And uh, I always wanted to play here when I was little. And I, you know, I just, I decided to walk, walk on here one day uh, to pursue my dream. Uh, the hardest thing about being a walk-on is uh, it's more me mental. Uh, you know, you're a part of the team, you do everything the team does. But uh, walking on, you know, 
you, you start from the bottom. And my mindset was to do everything. Any coach asked me, do everything right, even when they're not looking. And uh, really the hardest thing is just self-motivation. Uh, you gotta find a way to, to, to get yourself up every day and to, to do the things that, the, the, that, the, uh, that my teammates that have scholarships, you know, do the right thing. But you, you know, you're not getting any, you're really not benefiting from it, if that makes any sense, you know. Uh, so really just, it's just, it's just hard mentally, you know, telling yourself like, I, hey, I don't have a meal plan or I don't have books, you know, if I can't afford them, so I gotta find a way. And that's, that's just something I did, I found a way and I didn't complain about it. I'll never forget my first play practice ever, ever here in Pat. Um, I didn't know, I didn't know really nothing about the players at Southern Miss. And um, they asked me to be on scout team. And you know, it was a couple players complaining like, man, I want to be on scout team. In my, in my head, I was like, I, I'd do anything because I just want an opportunity. And the first play I ever, I ever uh, stepped in, practiced, I can't, I never forget, I came through Will and, and Dylan Bradley and I, I blocked a punt. I didn't hit, I blocked the punt. And they said, man, slow down, man. You know, and I told them, I said, man, I don't, I don't know how to slow down because I'm trying to play. You know, I'm trying to work my way up. I'm trying to show these coaches that I'd do anything, you know, uh, to go hard. So from that day on, you know, everybody kind of just gave me my respect because no matter what was my situation or where I came from, I always worked like I was a scholarship player or a starter, even though I wasn't. And that's just my mindset. Being on scholarship now, to me, is just, it's just, it's just a piece of paper. Uh, because in my mindset, I'm still a walk-on. In my mindset, just because I'm on scholarship don't mean I take a playoff or if I'm, I got a little nick or bruise and I, I miss a practice. Uh, it's, it's funny how the devil works, actually. You know, I signed on Monday and, and Tuesday, I, I kind of tweaked my hamstring. You know, and I, I couldn't really practice for the rest of the practice. And I was getting down on myself, but I, 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 I remember it. I said, you know, uh, the story of Joe, that's one of my favorite uh, Bible stories. You know, a lot of times we'll, you know, we'll praise and worship God when things are going well. But then to me, to me I told myself, Today, he, he allowed that to happen to see if I'm, I'm going to still keep that faith. See if I'm going to still praise him when things don't go my way. So, you know, just being on scholarship, to me, I still got the same mindset, the same goal. You know, every time I get out on the field, I dominate. You know, every time the coach is not looking out, I'm doing the right thing. So, you know, I just still, I still got the same mindset. Now, it's a blessing. It's definitely a blessing. You know, I won't have to struggle and go through the things that I've been going through. So, uh, it's definitely a blessing. And I'm, I'm excited, and I'm just excited to you know, make my coaches and teammates proud. When I put the black and gold on for the first time uh, against Kentucky last year, I mean, as soon as I put the pads on and, and stepped foot on that football field for the first time, it, it just felt like an honor just to just to be there, you know. Um, you hear about the tradition of the black and gold leading up to to you playing until leading up to your time to actually put the black and gold on, and, and you know that when you put the black and gold on, it, you have to represent this program the right way. So it's been an honor. Um, to be a part of Southern Miss, I, f I feel growth, growth. I think I, I grew as a person. I changed so much, I grew as a growth. That's, that, that's what I can say, growth. Uh, just putting the black and gold on just mean, man, just hard work, blood, just everything, tears. Like, you, people don't understand what you, you grow through out there on the practice field, the workouts. Just you just put so much in it, and when them lights come on, you it's just a different feeling when that black and gold on. It's just nasty bunch time. It mean a lot to me to put that black and gold out there. I'm representing Southern Miss, all the, the legends who came before me, um, hardworking guys, representing my family. Just black and gold, there's, there's no feeling like it. I mean, to put this black and gold on, it means a lot. It's, it's a feeling like no other. You just feel like a, a superpower, it's like you got superpowers. You feel like, I don't know, like a superhero or something. Uh, what makes it special, honestly, is, is, is not 
it's really just the support we get. It's, it's like no other in our conference, you know, coming out and seeing those stands packed. You know, you go to some away games and, you know, you can see the uh, stands barely filled. And you come out here and you come at the Rock and you see the stands are filled, you know, with people wearing that black and gold, the same color that you have on your back. It gives you chill bumps, you know, it gets you ready to play and ready to go. Putting on the black and gold to me means toughness, family. Um, you go out there and you don't look back. You go out there to try to win the game, you know, do it for each other. Don't, don't be uh, selfish. Go out there and do it for your teammates. The black and gold means family to me and brotherhood. I know whether, whatever I do, my brothers have my back on, whether I'm right or wrong. What it means where the black and gold is that we're just gonna outwork everybody. Like everyone in the country, everyone works hard, but no one works as hard as us. Like my brother plays at Illinois and they don't, they don't do the same kind of things we do. It's just, we're just harder. We just work harder, we're grittier than them. We're just tougher it's all together. Um, I would probably say it means family. Um, like I said, no one knows the sweat, the tears, as in Chase's point. Um, I mean, no one knows the hard work we put in just for Saturdays. Uh, but the 105 guys, the family we have here, that's probably what it will mean to me. It means that I work harder than everybody else and I gotta dominate. I feel like we work harder than everybody else and the things we do, other people don't do. So we, we deserve it. It means a lot. Um, to, to what a black and gold, it, it means a lot. You have to be nasty. You gotta be nasty. That, that's what Coach Hop yells every day. You gotta be nasty. You gotta bring it. You gotta be consistent. Yeah. You just gotta, adversity, when adversity strikes, you gotta be ready to you know, hang on to it and do what you need to do as a man. Okay, so to wear the black and gold to me kind of just means a, a community of, of people outside of just football. Um, people look at us as people not just with helmets on and shoulder pads on, but um, people in the community. Um, I love how our coaches talk about life and their life coaches really. Um, to, to wear the black and gold, it's just not a football player, it's just not four years of, of, of throwing a football or catching a football, but it's four years of building relationships and. Um, building yourself as a, as a man, most importantly. Uh, what it means to me to wear the black and gold is just tradition, family, um, just hardworking guys uh, that really didn't, came from really not much of anything, just worked hard for everything that they have and just going out there every Saturday for the fans, seeing all the fans in the stands, that's what, that's what being in the black and gold is all about. Well, when I put the jersey on before a game, I just, I look at the colors, I mean, the black and gold just means a lot. Nasty, tough, or uh, just having effort. But like, when I look at my last name, I gotta remind myself that not only I'm playing for this school, but I'm playing for my family. Uh, I just think, you know, it's a brotherhood. There's a bunch of guys that, um, you know, obviously different backgrounds, but the one thing that you all have in common is uh, we're all, none of us were given anything. We all had to work for it, so. You know, at the end of the day, we're all brothers. The water black and gold, man, is life. <laughs> I mean, just to be able to uh, go out on the field with your brothers and, and fight and, you know, win. I mean, it, all of it, man, it means a lot. So the Miss is special because we got a tradition of defense and the nasty bunch. And I grew up always watching Damian Fletcher, Dan Wilson. Uh, I saw his highlights before I even came here, so, yeah. <laughs> What it means to wear the black and gold is you gotta be tough and you gotta be nasty when you get out on that field. You gotta give it all, give good effort, and just leave it out on the field. Uh, well, there's definitely, there's a lot of tradition here. Um, and, you know, I know I'm not part of the defense anymore, but, you know, the nasty bunch mentality, uh, that definitely sticks, to, sticks with you. Uh, you, just, you just see the tradition, you see how, how, how hard the players work, so, I mean, that's how it's pretty cool to play for your hometown team and you get to see it all happen every day. I mean, it's, it's really more of an honor to wear the black and gold, being out there on the field, playing against where Brett Favre been played, that's, that's a big, tremendous step for me. Like, I never played somewhere as a bigger stadium like Southern Miss, so coming here, I'm, I'm right down the street, so that's all I kept hearing about the Southern Miss, the Golden Eagles. Then plus, Jamie Collins played here, so I was like, Man, that's awesome to play here, and I just came. 
to wear the black and gold, it means to me just a lot of blue collar guys just going out fighting each and every Saturday. It's deeper than just playing for yourself. It's playing for a city. It's playing for a school or university that has a lot of people counting on you. It's just all about tradition and going out there and putting out your best effort for the little guys that nobody give a chance to, to show them that you should have been the ones that they had as the five star, the six star. You're just going out there and proving everybody wrong each and every Saturday. Well, when I was young, my dad was, uh, he was a football coach in high school, and then by the time I got to junior high, he, uh, he real, uh, my sister, well, she, had, she was born, and he realized he could make enough money coaching, so he went to work for a Camel Soup Company, and, uh, but he still coached me all the way through, through uh, high school, and then uh, uh, I was very fortunate. I came from a little small town, but I got to play college ball, and so uh, I just, being around my father, and Growing up, going to the practices and all that kind of stuff, I just kind of fell in love with it. Well, I came from a small town, so I did everything, but uh, believe it or not, I love basketball. I, I was kind of a gym rat. There's nothing else to do in Honey Grove, Texas. And uh, uh, actually, I got a college scholarship to play basketball, and I played one year and realized that a, a, a 5'11 guard in, in college was not the answer. I mean, uh, I could still shoot it. Problem is, those uh, guys defending me were 6'3", and they were a lot faster than me, so I couldn't get a shot off. So I didn't get to play unless somebody's playing zone, so they'd run me out there, and after about a couple shots, they'd go back to man, so I had to sit down. So obviously, football was better for me, and then after really getting into it and getting in college, and uh, uh, my college roommate, best friend, he, was, he, he ended up being a football coach, too, and we just kind of began to love the game and love the X and O's part of it and that's kind of we got got involved both of us. Right out of college you know I got a uh, uh, became a secondary coach in Duncan, Oklahoma for a guy named Ray Hall who won four state championships in Oklahoma and, and uh, I was you know I was very fortunate in my career being around some very successful coaches and uh, I didn't have any, that's not, there wasn't anything else I wanted to do. So I started right there as in high school for a couple of years and got an opportunity to go to a GA in uh, University of Missouri. And uh, that kind of started me off in my college career. Of course, besides being a friend, Jay is a, uh, he's a life coach. Uh, you know, it's not just about football to him. Uh, now he is, uh, uh, he leaves no stone unturned. He's going to work as hard as anybody in America, but he's working for the right reason. He's working for the kids. He's working for the uh, the fans. He's working for the program. I mean, he you know he wants to uh, develop a, a football program that's a total program. It's just not about uh, wins and losses. But you know, we all understand that we he wants to win at everything, not just on the scoreboard, but with the kids in the classroom and hopefully one of these days be better husbands and fathers and better men in the community and represent Southern Miss the way you would want people to represent this university and uh, that's what I was looking for. There's a lot of guys in it right now that they just look at the dollar signs, you know, it's just what can we get out of the kids to, to get the W, to get, get the paycheck and uh, Jay's not that way and uh, that's, that's what that's what was important to me, especially this time in my career, that uh, we're here developing more than just a football program. Well, I think one, uh, Jay's doing it the right way. Uh, he didn't, he's not trying to get a quick fix, you know. Uh, that's kind of what the issue was here, I think, before. And uh, uh, he's trying to develop a program from the ground floor up, and uh, that takes time. You know, especially when you know when you don't have uh, as many people on scholarship as you should, and uh, that shows you things were not the way they're supposed to be. All the great programs, you don't have those issues. You know, programs that have been losing, you know, with they, they're always having an issue of, of being at their 85. You know, because you only sign 25 a year. So 
each year I think we're, we're, we're going to get better players. Uh, we're going to develop a program. Uh, I just think that uh, they got the right guy for the job. You know, I really do. I think that he understands what it takes to, to uh, develop a program. He understands what it takes to win. And he, he understands the state of Mississippi and Southern Miss. And so uh, I think he's a perfect fit for this, this school and university. Anytime I put on any uniform, I hope that I represent the universe the way it should be represented. And it makes me feel good to wear the black and gold because I know who's leading the program. Uh, I know now our new AD, John, I, I, I've met with him and talked to him. He's here for the right reasons and obviously our, we have a great president. And so I feel good wearing it because I know who I'm working for. And I've been places where I had on those colors, but I wasn't really excited about wearing them, you know. And but that's why I'm here. Uh, and uh, I think that the university is in a great situation right now with the leadership. Like I said, not only with the president, but the AD, and of course, of course, Jay can't be in a better spot. Well, Southern Mississippi's Golden Eagles now turn their attention to the final regular season ball game of 2017. They'll be up in Huntington, West Virginia on Saturday afternoon to take on the Marshall Thundering Herd. And we'll talk about them in a minute, but Hop, we just saw a feature on, on the Golden Eagles seniors. We talked a little bit about them last week, but uh, that's always an, a, an emotional day when uh, those seniors yeah. go out there with their, their family members and you know they're gonna play for the final time in the round. Yeah, it really is. And it's something, you know, we talked about uh, Saturday I don't think you really as a as a senior you really uh, really truly um, grasp it until you're 10 or 15 years out of college but what boy did they take advantage of it and uh, I thought the senior class uh, just you know definitely put their best effort out Saturday and so many seniors just had tremendous football games you know we talked about Kelsey earlier just a game of a lifetime but there's just so many guys. Edo had just a tremendous game. The offensive line blocked tremendous. I thought our D-line played outstanding. The secondary, I thought, was tremendous, you know, and just w watching all, all those upperclassmen, those seniors, finish out at the Rock that way was a special day. Another feature we just saw was uh, on uh, your assistant head coach and a guy that coaches the safeties, uh, Tim Billings. That's a guy you've known for a long yeah. time, ironically enough, back in your Marshall days as yeah. well. And yeah. boy, what a, a tremendous job he's done uh, coming back and helping you here at Southern Miss. Yeah, Tim's just a special friend and just an outstanding football coach. Uh, I can't put it any other way. Uh, he's just a very knowledgeable guy that, uh, again, just brings so much to our football program. And I've known him a long time. We've been friends for a long time. And I'm just truly, truly blessed to have him on staff. All right, well, the Golden Eagles this week wrap up the regular season with a trip up to Huntington, West Virginia, to take on the Marshall Thundering Herd. And boy, Doc Holliday's gotten them play really, really well. They, they just got beat at the buzzer on Saturday against uh, UTSA. But this is a really, really good Marshall team that can hurt in a lot of ways. Well, again, another tough Conference USA opponent, John, and uh, you know we know uh, we know Marshall's uh, a tough football team. Uh, you know, you, every week you go into Conference USA, it seems like it's one after the next, and uh, we certainly have to have a great week, and and uh, we know it's going to take a lot of hard work and, and preparation this week. We have uh, played against a lot of good quarterbacks, and they've got one, a veteran, and Chase Litton, who, boy, if, if they give him time to throw, he can uh, really put up some numbers. Yeah, again, he, he's, an, he's a talented young man, runs their offense extremely well. Uh, they have talented receiver, talent in the backfield. Uh, they play fast on defense and, and uh, just, again, another talented football team. All right, well, Hop, congratulations on that big win over Charlotte on Saturday. Best of luck this week against uh, the Marshall Thundering Herd. And this is our final show of the season. We may come back. I think we're going to come back maybe and do a bowl preview show. But uh, as far as the regular season is concerned, our final show, it's been great uh, sitting down with you each Monday talking Golden Eagle football. Well, John, it's a, 
it's a special, and let me give a shout out to you. It's special to have a show with a legend here to my right, and uh, what a tribute to you Saturday, and uh, nobody's more deserving. And, and uh, we talked in the radio show for you, you guys out there watching on TV. Uh, there's probably nothing this man to my right doesn't know about Golden Eagle football and um, just a true blessing to do the show with you. And it's been, it's been great working with you and it's been great uh, being able to call you my friend for a long time. Well, let's keep doing it for about another 20 hey, years. Or like about that. All right, the Golden Eagles up at Marshall on Saturday afternoon. Hope to see you there. Thanks for being with us throughout the year. We'll see you next time with another inside look into Golden Eagle football been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. Bocoma Casino invites you to come experience a Las Vegas-style atmosphere with small-town Southern Charm just up the road in Sandersville, Mississippi. You could drive over 70 miles to the coast, but don't risk the road. Bocoma Casino boasts over 700 high-energy slots, plus your favorite table games like blackjack, craps, roulette, and poker. Our 27,000-square-foot casino offers so many ways to win. Come see us at Bocoma Casino. Real winning, real close to home. Sandersville, Mississippi. Play here, win here. Hey Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success, from the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts to the talent it cultivates in the classroom. We share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.